My name is Nick Chan, and I'm a Client Portfolio Manager within Goldman Sachs Asset Management's Quantitative Investment Strategies team. Our team manages the National Bank Investments Smart Data U.S. Equity Fund as well as the Smart Data International Equity Fund. And today, I'm excited to be talking to you about market performance over the last few months, our positioning in our portfolio currently, and our outlook on markets into the future. Going into February of 2018, the equity markets around the world experienced 15 consecutive months of positive returns. The market rally was incredible both in terms of its size and consistency. And in fact, during this period, the S&P 500 returned about 36%, while the MSCI EFA index returned about 33%. Now, in addition to these strong market returns, market volatility was also historically low. And this coincided with both accommodative central bank policy, but also support of macroeconomic conditions globally. In the first few days of February, however, the market did experience a pretty significant reversal or drawdown. In fact, most global equity markets were down around 8% in a matter of just 10 days. Now, in addition to that, market volatility also spiked to very, very high levels. And in fact, one measure of that, the VIX indicator, or the VIX index, had its largest single-day intraday move in its history. It moved from 17% to 37%. While many investors were shaken by this latest market downturn, we believe it serves as a useful reminder to investors that we expect market volatility to be higher in the future and in fact revert to historically more normal levels. Accordingly, we believe it's important to remind investors of the importance of staying invested and being in a broadly diversified portfolio. In terms of valuations, the U.S. equity market is a bit stretched. It is actually quite expensive relative to its own history on an absolute basis, but also relative to most other developed markets. That being said, we want to remind investors the importance of staying invested. Because if investors exit the market too early, trying to time the business cycle, what we have found is that you could miss out on the final remaining months or even years of a market rally. In contrast to the U.S., Valuation levels in both Europe and Japan are closer to their historical averages. In addition to that, the recovery in both those regions is a few years behind the economic recovery in that of the U.S. And when you cap that off with the fact that both the European Central Bank and the Bank of Japan are continuing to, to offer accommodative monetary policy, we are very optimistic on both of those regions. Taking into consideration rising geopolitical tensions, and when you think of North Korea and Syria, or ongoing trade tensions around the world, our approach emphasizes a very diversified approach. And in fact, within our smart data funds, we take hundreds of positions across stocks in our portfolio in an effort to really loan on factors or signals that both use fundamental data, but also alternative data, such as credit card sales, digital web traffic, satellite images, patent databases, and more. One trend we're seeing in our analytics is this idea of the internet of foods. Now, while many consumers have moved a lot of their entertainment online for many, many years, a trend that we're seeing is that both restaurants as well as internet service providers and software companies are also taking advantage of this very, very same theme. If you look at the words they use themselves in their own regulatory filings, words like website, web traffic, social, strategy, these are things that point to a trend of an integration of food services, food preparation, food delivery with internet platforms. Studies have shown that restaurants that provide some type of online food delivery outpace their peers who have no digital presence whatsoever. In, addi in addition to that, software companies are oftentimes pursuing digital food delivery as well as part of their business models. After several years of rising, steadily rising markets with very, very low volatility, our expectation going forward is that there will be increased volatility across global markets, especially when you take into consideration the divergence of central bank policy going forward. Here's what we do know. Firstly, geopolitical concerns will continue. There are geopolitical risks, for example, in North Korea, which do have some sensitivity to Japanese equities. Even when you look within Europe, the Brexit transitions are ongoing, and we have, we're seeing currently the aftermath of the Italian elections uh, and the rise of the populist government there. Secondly, 
U.S. protectionist trade policies and the potential for additional tariffs will put pressure on many multinational firms doing business around the world, in the U.S., but across the world as well. And thirdly, the U.S. Federal Reserve's consistent pace of rising interest rates may also apply some pressure um, on valuations within U.S. equities in the near term. Despite these concerns, we do see fundamental strength and positive momentum across corporations in both North America and abroad. In fact, within the U.S., we've seen consumer confidence reach a 17-year high just back in April. And also, the average S&P 500 company had year-on-year -year growth in earnings per share of 24% in the first quarter. In Europe, the labor market continues to exhibit strength with unemployment continuing to fall, and manufacturing confidence also remains very, very positive. While we always must remain vigilant of the ongoing economic and geopolitical risks around the world, we do think it actually presents opportunities for us and our smart data approach in terms of loading on the factors and signals that we think can actually identify the most prosperous companies in our universe.